Good morning. It's good to be with you again today. I'm glad you could join me to spend some time in God's Word. Uh, this is your daily devotion for Friday, December 8th. And um, we continue, of course, in Isaiah. Today, we hear, uh, we hear in the midst of this, uh, we hear some wonderful gospel here uh, for, us, for us today. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at that together uh, as we read in portion of, uh, portion of Isaiah chapter 24 and 25. Our psalm for today is Psalm 11. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test, the children of man. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked, fire and sulfur, and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 14. They lift up their voices, they sing for joy over the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the west. Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord, in the coastlands of the sea give glory to the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away, woe is me. For the traitors have betrayed, with betrayal the traitors have betrayed. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are opened, and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken, the earth is split apart, the earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. On that day, the Lord will punish the host of heaven in heaven and the kings of the earth on the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in a prison, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed, for the Lord of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and his glory will be before his elders. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like a heat in a dry place. You subdue the noise of the foreigners as heat by the shade of a cloud, 
so the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, and Moab shall be trampled down in his place, as straw is trampled down in a, in a dunghill. And he will spread out his hands in the midst of it, as a swimmer spreads his hands out to swim. But the Lord will lay low his pompous pride together with the skill of his hands. And the high fortifications of his walls he will bring down, lay low, and cast to the ground, to the dust. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, here today, dear saints, in chapter 25, we hear, uh, we hear the prophet announcing the kingdom of Christ. Um, in, the, in the beginning of our text today, the, 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 uh, the, the, the last, um, the second part of Isaiah chapter 24, I should say, uh, we see more of this imagery of um, this destruction, judgment upon the whole earth that continues here. And then in 25, it shifts here. And God, uh, God promises here that he swallows up death forever. In fact, let's look at this verse again. This is uh, Isaiah 25, 7. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. We see this um, if you look and uh, read in Revelation 7 where John is having the vision and we hear these words uh, of, the, of the angel, the one who uh, repeats these words of Isaiah uh, uh, verse 8, uh, 20, uh, chapter 25 verse 8 here. It's repeated there. That God would, would uh, wipe away all the tears from all, faith, uh, all faces. Also, when, in Isaiah, when, I, when he is uh, referring, we, when we hear mountain, uh, this is, we can see this as the church. The hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Uh, church, the early church fathers recognized that and, and uh, saw in Isaiah that, that, that the mountain was uh, speaking, speaking of the church. And on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. Think of how you and I are continually fed and nourished in word and sacrament. Uh, in the church, God continues to nourish us. The Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives as, as every day in our baptism we rise anew. That is, every day is almost as if it's a, it's a constant conversion for us, dear saints, where we are being made more and more into the image of Christ as we put to death the works of, um, of sin, of, of our sinful nature, of the old Adam. Um, this, is, this is Jesus here for you and for me. And because I, I love it when, when it says in the prophets, for the Lord has spoken. His word is certain and true. Uh, God speaks. He speaks life. He speaks, he speaks life in, into us. Um, and his word is certain for tr and, and true. Here we are again. I love when we look at Isaiah that we consider the fact that se here we are 700 years uh, before the time of Christ. And um, 
through the prophet Isaiah, God is putting this, uh, putting this right there for us, for us to see and for Isaiah, the prophet, to see and the people to see that God has promised and he will do what he says he's going to do. This began when we, when we heard the first, uh, first gospel in Genesis 3.15 where God promised that he would send this Savior. We see throughout all of scriptures as the scriptures speak of Christ. All scriptures are about our redemption. Point us to Christ. And, and here we get this in Isaiah as well. <clears throat> and this is God's promise to us and his words are true this is truth and this is life for you and me today <clears throat> if you turn in your catechism uh, I, I uh, certainly can relate the third petition to this again we just read that yesterday um, but let's look at the second petition. I'm going to just work backwards here for a minute. The second petition says this, Thy kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity because of God's word, because of his promises for you and for me, not because of anything that you and I have done or that we have left undone, dear saints. Uh, as, we, as we continue to battle with sin, we have, the, we have the promise and the sure hope of the gospel for us. We know that he has saved us from our sins and on that day, uh, we will go to be with him forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, a blessed Friday to you, and I will see you again tomorrow to close out the week.